Hello YouTube, welcome to this very exciting video on the Land Rover Discovery 2 V8 engine rebuild. In this video I assemble the bottom half of the engine. Everything but the heads goes on there. All the big important stuff, crankshaft, conrods, pistons and the sump, oil pickup pipe and the whole front end assembly too. Let's get into it. This is a meaty one. So you've seen all the bits laid out in the lounge, now it's time to put it together. So I previously cleaned the block down. I went to great lengths and wasted a lot of uh, brake cleaner cleaning it through using an uh, airline and uh, a little brake cleaner squirter. So um, it's she is ready to assemble. So I'm putting bearings in, oiling those bearings, dropping the crank in and now putting the caps on. Now there's some uh, procedure here, I forget exactly what it is, but you can see I refer to the instructions any minute now. Which ones you tighten first, the large main cap bolts or the cross bolts going out the side of the block. There we go, look, I'm referring to that instruction sheet. Look at that. So those are all talked up, and that really is, uh, is it, the crankshaft is in. So next I'm putting oil in the bores and wiping it around with my hand. Now, I tried it with a cloth before and you get lots of lint in there, which is no good. Now I'm getting the first piston and conrod, whipping the cap off the big end. I fill the back of the piston with oil and ensure that the small end uh, is is soaked in oil. It's right through the joint, you know, right through the uh, bearing. Uh, put the assembly lube on the crankshaft and then the cap on the end, look. And torqued it down. So I'm on to the rest of them now. I've wound the caps down on each one as I put them in. Just you can see with like a crank handle. Um, uh, and then go on to the next one. So I think I'm going to talk all those up at the end of the job, and you'll see that in the next bit of video. I think I've worked my way back, so I've gone left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Looks like they're all in there now. So I'm having a little break, and then I'm going to come back and talk them up. There we go, the obligatory engine rotation, which you'd see on every video after an engine is put together. And maybe we should have one from the top too. Yeah, there we go. Next, I'm going to put in the camshaft and the timing uh, gears or sprockets and then the timing chain, making sure it's all uh, timed correctly and tightened up uh, with all the assembly lube necessary. And I think after that I can get the um, oil pump and front cover on and that'll be the front done. Oil pickup pipe and sump and then that'll be the bottom done. Right, crank pulley comes off and I'm cleaning meticulously and very wastefully the camshaft. I put the sprocket on it because it makes it easier to lift, just to hold it basically and, and put it in. And then I take the sprocket back off once it's in there. Lots of cleaning uh, of the thrust plate. And then I'm going to bolt that on with lots of assembly lube. You can see that going on now. Took those two bolts up and put, there we go, just talking them up. Put the gear on or the sprocket on and... I think I gave it a good spin. Now I've got to put it on with the chain, making sure the two marks are lined up. So here's the chain, and the crank sprocket just slides on. There we go, so tighten that up. And I think off camera I did give it a rotate and check, double check. So that's all done. Now I take the pulley off again and offer up this uh, engine oil pump and cover. So the timing chain's on, the camshaft is in, lots of uh, assembly lube, and I just offered this on. The manual mentions a special tool for getting this cover on, something about alignment of the oil pump, but really there was no dramas, it's on, it's uh, it's lined up on its dowels. I don't quite understand the need for it really, maybe to protect the seal, but it never never came anywhere near the seal, the seal's still fine. So, so yeah, I've offered it up just to check it, and I can see that there is actually a bit of a rock from here, I don't know if you can see that. Possibly, you can see that gap closing up. Anyway, it's, it's slightly warped, 
It never leaked when it came off, so I just put a couple of bolts in to check that the bolt tension takes up that warp, and it does. It's no problem. It's quite a big, flexible thing, really. So the next time uh, I'll... Well, I've got to go cook dinner now, but um, when I come back on this, you'll see in the time-lapse. So I'm going to put um, sealant around the back. Uh, obviously, there's no gasket in here yet. There's, there's a gasket to go in with sealant, and I'll put another one here with sealant as well. And because uh, it all clamps down... Let me see. Yeah, there's a lot of bolts here which hold it. But there's also bolts here which go uh, here and here, which go through the water pump and hold it. So I don't want to tighten this thing up and leave it overnight without those ones in. I wanted it assembled as as one, and then all those bolt torques can be tight. And this is quite critical here. You wouldn't want a leak uh, between the water and the oil if, if a leak occurs inside of this cover. So I want to do all of that as one. Water pump and cover all as one, you see. Well, I'm ready to fit this now. I've tripped the faces are clean. Obviously the block. Oil pump, timing cover housing, thingamabob, and now the water pump. So this I'm actually reusing. Um, but I've had a good check. Clean the surface. Uh, it does have a, a a pressed steel impeller, although they're fairly thick bits of, uh, it's a fairly thick bit of steel. Uh, and you'd rather see a cast one on there. Um, it's been on there. I know it works. I know it doesn't leak. There's a... Um, there's a leak hole in these water pumps. Well, most all water pumps I've seen have a, a hole there where um, coolant can drain out. It's like an indicating hole, really. Um, if there's a leak on the seal, and I, I don't know, but I guess it prevents damage to the bearings as well. Um, so these can fail in a number of ways. The bearings can fail, the impeller can fall off, or the seal can leak. That's about it, really. So this one isn't leaking. Um, the bearings sound good. I can spin it fairly fast. And the impeller hasn't fallen off and it's been on the car, so it'll be running at a lower temperature now. So all things aside, I think this pump is alright and I'm going to reuse it. I've cleaned the um, the barb there for the hose as well. And the funny thing about these, you can sort of get an idea of the condition of the pump by spinning the um, uh, drive flange. Because there's two bearings and then a seal. And uh, if the seal is good, it slows it down very rapidly. Uh, and also it's very hard to pick up on camera, but as it slows down, it kind of bounces a tiny bit like that. Uh, which is the rubber seal grabbing it. So you might, no, you can't see it on camera, but uh, it bounces, just bounces back a tiny bit from its rotation like that. Which means the seal is nice, it's grabbing the shaft tightly and um, and sealing. So, yeah, I'm going to fit it. I've got a spare water pump gasket and timing cover gasket. I could change it at a later date if I wanted to. Uh, although, of course, you lose the coolant, but there we go. So there, gaskets ready to go on, so I'll do a little time-lapse of that next. Got the torque, torque setting in the manual here and the uh, torque sequence for those bolts. Um, so I can get on and do it. Right, here goes. I'm putting sealant on the front of the engine block, and then I'm going to um, stick the paper gasket to that. And then I'll put sealant on the back of the cover as well. Once you've used sealant, you become addicted to it, and you just can't. You can't fit a component with a gasket only and not seal it. It's just, it's impossible to do. So the same again, seal it on the water pump and the gasket either side. And you're guaranteed no leaks that way. But it is an addiction. <laughs> Once you've got instant gasket in your garage, you can't stop using it. Well, that's the front cover and water pump fitted now. Um, yeah, I'll talk through what I did. I talked through what I did in the time lapse. The pulley is on, but uh, I've left the nut specifically very far out because I need to tighten it. I can't do it very well without um, the flex plate being on the back of the engine, so that will have to come later. Next thing is to turn it over and put the oil pickup pipe in uh, into the oil pump. And there we go, so I can do that. And uh, start assembling those bits on the bottom of the engine here. Now I've realised that actually the camera's quite far away from the engine for a time lapse, so I'll bring it a bit closer now uh, when I put those bits on. So I've turtled the engine over to clean it, as with everything, you've got to clean it first. Uh, using lots of brake cleaner. Put this little stud in there with lots of thread lock. And then a little spacer goes on top, you can see it just appear in a second, there we go. <laughs> so the oil pickup pipe hangs off that basically and bolts into the, um, the oil pump at the front where I'm showing loads of assembly lube to get that oil pump nice and primed, ready to suck oil up for the first rotation of the engine. There we go, bolts go in, or nuts go in and bolts go in. And then I've got to torque that one up and torque the little tiny ones in the oil pump up. And it's done. Right, I'm onto the sump. Right, I'm onto the sump now. I cleaned it up. There's a new sump gasket, but it's uh, wrong. So for something else. So I've had a look at the sump gasket that came off, and it's pretty good. I'm going to reuse it. It's also, I think, quite different than the cork gasket. It has some uh, thickness to it and some substance. It can't be crushed down too much. So I'm going to use instant gasket on there. Uh, not too much, like the previous owner. And I'm also using a proper RTV, which is going to um, dry and then it won't be 
dissolved by the oil. So we shouldn't have the same problem that the thing had before. That's on. I just got to silicon the engine block now, the bottom of the block, and then um, put it on. This sump took some cleaning. There was so much crap in it. There was probably half a pint of sludge in the bottom of the sump. So I took the windage plate out and uh, I've um, lock tighted those bolts back in now. But it was such a state. So I'm really pleased I did that. And I found the bolt that I was missing as well. <laughs> the 13th bolt for this uh, the sump pan. So I'm going to put that on next. So a very thin layer of sealant on there. The sealant's already on the sump on the other side of the gasket. Whip the bolts in and tighten them uh, in sequence according to the instructions. She's done. That is that. That's it now. The bottom end's done. The next thing to be done in camera shot is the flywheel really. So I need to uh, take the engine off the stand, put the seal in, the rear crank seal, and then fit the flywheel flex plate in this case. So yeah, I said in that video I reused the uh, gasket. And here we go. I did put sealer on it. It actually says in the manual to put sealer on it. And I'm really happy with the amount. I don't know if you can see it. It's very hard to see, but uh, you can see a tiny bit of squeezing out. Uh, there it is, look. So there's a tiny bit of squeezing out. Not too much, which means I feel like I've got just the right amount on there, really. You don't want a huge amount of squeezing out, but a tiny bit is uh, sort of um, suggestive that there's enough there filling the gap. So that's great, it should look similar on the side, uh, on the inside, I'm sorry, that oil, that uh, sealant will dry and cure and the oil won't dissolve it, it's proper good stuff. Victor Rains, Rains is all, it's uh, RTV, so that won't block the pickup tube like the last slot did. So and that is all folks, that is all for this video, we'll wrap it up there, uh, join me next time where we put the heads on and the rockers and things like that, get the top end built basically. I hope you're enjoying these videos, I'm certainly enjoying making them. Uh, there is plenty more to come.